Well, that, that's it. But talking about people dying, Kelvin, if someone's poor elderly mother is in a crumpled heap at the bottom of the stairs and there's no ambulance there or a woman goes into labour, which is apparently a Category 3... Uh, must have been a man who designed that policy, but it's a Category 3, apparently, a woman in labour, and no ambulance. I think people might be inclined to blame the strikers. Well, I think the the issue is the, the most disgusting aspect I've seen of these negotiations between uh, between unionised people and, uh, and NHS and the ambulance trusts, of which, by the way, the unions, unison ones, are all run by communists anyway. I mean, it is an sh absolute shocker. I'm sure you're your uh, viewers will be astonished as I was to discover that one of them was one of them has just been kicked out of the Labour Party for being way too far left, and uh, the other person, the general secretary of the thing, I think it's Unison, in fact, uh, is uh, is a former communist herself. I mean, the whole thing is it's all far left nonsense. The danger is the idea that you negotiate case by case. Literally, when the phone goes, say, well, what is that? Uh, they've got two broken legs and their arm has, has fallen off. Uh, no, we can't turn out for that. Oh, they've had a multiple serious heart attack. Yeah, we'll do that. It is an absolute disgrace that they will even think about doing. And the idea, as your other mm, commentator okay. points out, that, in fact, we all rely on it. The reason we rely on this clapped out, useless NHS is because we pay okay. a huge amount of money and tax towards it, and I don't want to pay any more for it, and actually I don't want them to earn any more money, and if they all work out, fantastic, the system will be ten times better than the system that exists okay. today. Matthew, your views? I think in the case of the nurses, and quite possibly in the case of the ambulance workers, this is an existential cry for help from the NHS. I was engaging with a very senior doc or a senior doctor just a couple of days ago, getting her view. She's working on the on the front line. And her view is that doctors, in a way, have been complicit in the degradation of the NHS over the past few years because they have been prepared to work way beyond or significantly beyond what they should be having to do in order to keep the service running. And as a consequence of that, she feels the service is now at a tipping point where they are unable to deliver the sort of service that they need to do and that we all need them to do. So we have to listen to people who, unlike Kelvin, unlike me, unlike you, Patrick, have dedicated their lives to keeping people alive. If they are making this sort of cry for help, rather than blaming them, we should look at why, why, are, why are they screaming so loudly and demanding help. Our society doesn't work at the moment. At the last okay. count, there are 177 billionaires in the UK alone. Together, £653 billion is in the hands of 177 people. When you think of what the nurses are asking right. and what that adds to, it's a fraction of that. Britain isn't working, just as Kelvin will remember, okay. Labour, he would claim, wasn't working in the late 1970s. OK, Kelvin, look, some people are saying, well, the ambulances already aren't hitting their particular timings for people. It's already not a particularly good service at all. Maybe this dispute over pay is just designed to line their pockets, won't actually improve the quality of care at all. Well, that, that, goes back to the, that goes back to the argument about whether the NHS is worth saving in the first place. And on the issue of, uh, of, the, uh, of the NHS workers all flogging themselves to death for the future of mankind, I don't buy that at all. Yes, there are some hardworking people there. There's some idle people there. For instance, they take an extra three weeks sick off over a year, right? The average nurse makes 40 grand a year. That's, that's NHS digital. Look, I totally accept you've got, you've got doctors who are now claiming that they're all overworked. The GP, I know one GP, does two days a week, does two 12-hour days, gets two-thirds of the money, makes 66,000. When they ask, well, why don't you work a bit harder? Her response is, I want to be with my kids. I understand this, but it can't be solved by a state-run health system, which okay. clearly is no longer working. OK, Matthew, if you were in the same position, let's say you're on 34 grand a year, your job was as a paramedic, you had had some form of payoff for roughly around the 4% mark, do you think now, today, morally, if you got a phone call to say that an elderly lady had broken her hip and was at the bottom of the stairs, would you break that picket line? Would you hop in your ambulance and go and help or not? Would you have solidarity? Listen, 
I will repeat the point that I haven't dedicated my life to public service. I've been a, a journalist. I've tried work for the BBC for nine years. I've tried to do my bit, but I haven't put myself on the line in the way, in the way that these guys have, right? And, and so the answer to your question is, if I were in that position, if I had been as generous as these people have with their lives and earned as little as they've earned, then, well, I wouldn't be in that position, but I, wouldn't, I would actually go and pick up an elderly person. But I think it would be disingenuous of me to criticise these people because they've done what you and Kelvin and I have not done with their lives, okay. and that is elderly people alive every day of the week. OK, very lastly, I literally I've got 30 seconds max with you, Kelvin. Would you give them any more money whatsoever? No, I wouldn't, but I'd make sure that their next pay round dealt with the inflation that followed. They got the money because okay. there wasn't any inflation in the February. There will be inflation this oh. February. They'll do just great. Just grit your teeth. The money will come to you.